been investing in India since 2001. The focus has been on healthcare, water, energy, and agriculture. And we have Sachindra Rudra, who's India director at the Acumen Fund, to correct me if I uh, left anything out. But really, here at Sankat 2013, uh, the focus has been on whether or not impact investors, social enterprises are capable of achieving transformational change. So it really boils down to are we not doing enough? And uh, before we dive into details, just this industry, this sphere, how do you assess it? How do you take stock? <clears throat> well, I think transformational change will come from various levels. Uh, and I think various stakeholders have a role to play in it. Um, you know, the government clearly, civil society. But I do think that private enterprise has a very important role to play in that transformational change. Uh, and that's really from impact investors and our firms on two levels. One is, uh, in some cases, we will provide a good or a service to a bottom of the pyramid consumer, which has never been provided before. The enterprise itself might be of a certain size, but the impact of providing that service successfully, profitably, sustainably to that BOP consumer can then be transformational uh, much wider than the set of consumers that they serve. Because then you will find three other competitors providing that service in different parts of India. You will pr find somebody providing it in Africa. And suddenly you'll find that a whole market has been created. So based on that point alone, yes. one could argue that transformational change is already taking place. I mean, is that your belief then? Yes, it's already taking place. And acumen in the uh, enterprises that we've invested in see entrepreneurs see consumers and see a product or a service, whether it's to do with healthcare, it's to do with sanitation, it's to do with electricity in villages of Bihar which never had electricity, and those transactions are taking place. Uh, therefore, I think but the basis- But on scale large enough, I mean, that's the cynic in me talking about. Right. Now. Uh, is the scale large enough? And I think that's what I'm referring to when I say transformational change. Is it affecting you know, we're talking about a population of uh, in excess of a billion and a half. So right. really, it's, it boils down to scale. And you will see examples on both ends, to be frank. You will see one of our companies, which is called Water Health International, uh, which we invested in many years ago, which started off providing RO water to communities which used to use untreated and fairly unhygienic water. Uh, that enterprise has spread through India, now to Africa, and has impacted more than 100 million people. Truly transformational. You'll see another one of our companies, Zikitsa Healthcare Limited. When we invested in this company, they had 10 ambulances. Today, they have more than 1,000. And these ambulances are providing BOP consumers high quality access to get from the homes where they might face a heart attack or break a leg to a hospital in the golden hour. If you're not treated in that golden hour, the percentage of success goes down by as much as 60%. Already transformational. And then there are companies which have started off maybe two or three years ago. As you correctly point out, they may be impacting a much smaller set of people. But the potential has been laid. And unless impact investors and enterprises keep trying out these experiments, we will never reach a Zikitsa Healthcare or a Water Health International over the next five to six years. True. Acumen Fund here in India. You know, uh, what are the principles that define your investing in India? What are the criteria? What are the areas that particularly draw your attention today? Because you've also sort of matured in India now, well over a decade. It's actually, I can uh, make it quite simple. It's simply three things. The problem that the enterprise should be attacking should be big, hairy. Mm. Okay. Um, if it's small, if everybody else can do it, it's not really very interesting for acumen. Uh, the idea or the change that you're creating should be audacious. So you're really trying to make a delta rather than little incremental changes. Um, this should be done by an entrepreneur who we are perfectly aligned with. Okay. We find the difference between success and failure for us often has to do with the entrepreneur. And surrounding all this has to be the bottom of the pyramid consumer. Okay. So big hairy problems for the bottom of the pyramid consumer, audacious solutions to meet that need, and a committed entrepreneur who's well aligned with us. Well, based on that broad definition, you must get uh, 
a lot of uh, proposals for funding with you know funding requests but you know what about measuring returns measuring impact um, one one does find that entrepreneurs as they grow begin to devote a fair amount of their energy towards impact measurement mm -hmm. and sometimes that can be perhaps counterproductive take away from their core business um, you know is that is that something that you're sensing as enterprises are <coughs> maturing this inordinate focus on impact measurement I, I, I think the fo there is an increased focus on impact measurement and I think that's a good thing for the industry uh, because if you start off saying that we are trying to create impact unless you're able to measure it and unless you're able to not prove it to others but prove it to yourself that you're doing a good job on impact everything that you're doing you know has a little bit of a question over it so I think it's a good focus that's happening I think the industry has tended to focus very much on the number of lives impacted mm. which is 100 million people 10 million people 1000 people uh, but now the industry industry is moving towards the multiplier how much was each of these 10 million people impacted because you need to multiply that 10 million number with how much each person on average was impacted to figure out the impact that you created and I think there's a lot of good work which is happening by funds uh, and as you pointed out by entrepreneurs in trying to see what might be the right way to judge uh, you know we kept a girl child in school what was the impact on the family of keeping that girl child in school these are tough ones to measure I mean if you ask a lay person like me but is there a gold standard out there still you know is there a gold standard that everyone accepts as the gold standard for measuring value and return uh, I think the lives impacted is obviously out there but on the multiplier in my opinion I don't think there's a gold standard and I think a lot of the work which many people who support the sector do isn't actually not coming out maybe with a gold standard but maybe a couple of them and there are things that you can do uh, you know simply uh, in some situations uh, so the difference between what a service is available for in the pure for-profit private sector versus what you're offering that service at can often be the value that you're creating so for example we have a company called LifeSpring which basically does maternal health and pregnancy and if we offer that service to a BOP consumer at 4000 rupees and if they went to a private sector hospital of similar quality and got it for 10,000 rupees then you could argue that the difference between those two could be something at a starting point however there are much more difficult ones keeping a girl child in school is much harder to put a value on that and uh, we have actually received proposals from institutes uh, of great repute uh, which work in the social space educational institutes which want to help us in trying to put a value on this but as you can imagine that requires uh, you know a fair amount of study sometimes over periods of time uh, to really reach that value what about the gaps in the ecosystem here in India mm -hmm. you want to flag off any glaring gaps from your perspective I think the glaring gaps in the ecosystem uh, which are you know being filled and there are great organizations doing great work but I see two which come to mind immediately the first is that an enterprise and an entrepreneur need much more than capital to crack the big hairy problems which I was talking about uh, these are BOP consumers uh, their um, you know their understanding of markets and products and services is different from the consumers uh, that commercial enterprise is used to they have their own thumb rules they have their own way of telling whether you're giving them value or not uh, but it's different and I think the entrepreneurs and enterprises need a lot of help and there are a number of companies which are working with early stage entrepreneurs uh, one of the organizers of this conference uh, is, one such, is, is one such company which runs incubators uh, which actually help these entrepreneurs develop those skills so I think that's the gap which needs to be filled you said there was a second gap yes uh, which is access to non-equity capital by such enterprises um, most of these enterprises need to also leverage uh, pretty much like any enterprise does and I think debt markets uh, for these enterprises are very weak and but narrow modest beginnings being made there modest beginnings being made there <clears throat> and I think again uh, there are funds which are focusing on the debt side of it 
Uh, we partner with many of them. We say we are putting equity capital at risk, but we need uh, a certain amount of leverage to make sure that this company has enough capital to reach the next stage of growth. Uh, and as you point out, good beginnings being made uh, by people over there. Intelligro is one such organization which is putting together a debt fund to do exactly that. But the numbers are still very small right now, just in terms of portfolio size and you know uh, how many uh, enterprises are looking for debt, but the availability of it still still a fraction of what the demand is. It, it is still a fraction for what the demand is, and uh, you know that, that that cuts both ways because I do think that uh, debt to these companies should be given to companies which can take on debt. True. It can be dangerous if the sort of pendulum swings to the other side. Uh, and therefore, I think it requires scrutiny. However, the debt givers also need to appreciate uh, the business model that these companies are coming up with, which does not often lend itself to traditional uh, debt giving. Uh, you know, how many years of uh, you know, track record do you have? Uh, are, are personal guarantees from promoters? Some of those things will not work in this sector. Uh, but the happy news is that even the small start can I think convince uh, bigger organizations, and we've had great interest from some private sector banks in India on how they can give debt to our companies. Um, and I think that movement is uh, well on its way. Um, it needs to move uh, quite a bit still though. It's interesting, you never mentioned any government inadequacies when we were talking about gaps in the ecosystem, but we'll leave that for another conversation. Currently, what what are you focusing on at, you know at the acumen fund um you know are there any i know it's simplistic to say this is exciting or this space is mm -hmm, exciting mm -hmm. but is there is there something which is currently occupying a lot of your attention any space any particular concept yes uh three of them worth mentioning one is a space where we find a lot of activity in uh, we love it because we've got very successful investments in that area and therefore it's an area of comfort with great impact uh, that's the area of energy. Uh, we have companies like Avni, uh, Bio, we have Husk Power Systems, which are, we've invested in. And um, you know, before I got here, exactly two hours before, I was meeting another promoter uh, to try to do a deal in that sector. So great impact and a lot of activity. Uh, one area where we find great impact and we wish um, and are actively looking for good enterprises and good entrepreneurs is healthcare. Uh, it's a big gap for the Indian BOP consumer. We find a healthcare episode can move households which have moved into the lower middle income class segment back below the poverty line because the ticket sizes can be 20, 30, sometimes 50,000 rupees for a single episode which happened to a parent or which happened to the breadwinner. Um, and therefore, we believe that we would love to see more enterprises and entrepreneurs over there. And then there is the holy grail for most Indians, owning your own house. Mm. And um, I thought there was a, a lot of activity on that front. You find that space interesting? We find that space very interesting and we find two parts of it in very interesting. One is people who build the house itself. Uh, what is often described as low-cost housing is out of the reach of the BOP consumer. Absolutely. The ticket sizes there can be between about 6 to 10 lakhs of rupees, which is not what somebody who's living below 2 or $3 a day is going to afford. So we are encouraging entrepreneurs and developers who are familiar with the space to take themselves down a notch in projects that we can participate in. The second is housing finance. Uh, you know, how do you get a home loan when you don't get a salary slip at the end of the month? And again, we are working with organizations, some of which have worked in areas like microfinance before, to provide, um, you know, not diluted, uh, but more, uh, more relevant terms to that sort of an household uh, to buy an asset, which still in India is the number one aspiration for people across the board. I want to own my own house. I'll testify to that. Sachindra Rudra, thanks very much uh, for your time. Great talking to you. Lovely. Thank you so much.